This is part two from the inheritance video that was made earlier. And the package is called inheritance. We'll keep working with that. Now that I've got my vehicle class set up with its constructors and attributes, and I have a car class set up which inherits from vehicle, and I have a bike class set up which inherits from vehicle, and I have a wheels class set up. Now that doesn't inherit from anybody, but on the bike class, notice that one of the attributes is of type wheels, and it's an array of wheels. I, I named it AO wheels. You could have named it anything. Probably num wheels would be better. And I created an array that had two elements. So in other words, for every bike object you create, which gets everything from vehicle, it's going to have at least two wheel objects also associated with it. And that attribute for the wheel will be size. So if I came down here and I started to write a program with this, I could say bike, o bike equals new bike. Now I can go ahead and declare uh, an empty constructor like that. And when I create the bike object, it would come up and do this. However, one thing that would be really wise to do is in that constructor, I'd probably put the word super, parenthesis, parenthesis, which says call the vehicle constructor. And we do it, we don't have to do it, but we do it out of respect for the parent to make sure that if anything was happening in the parent constructor, which in this case, nothing is, but if anything was happening there, it could execute. So it's one of those better safe than sorry's. We just always put a super and call the parent. So there's our bike constructor that says super. Down here, we created a bike. We now have a bike object. I could say, oh, bike dot, AO wheels, and that's an attribute, and it's an array, meaning if I said bracket zero bracket, that refers to the first position. But remember, there's nothing in it yet. So you would be responsible for going and creating a wheels object and putting in that first element. And then I could do the same thing, O bike dot AO wheels bracket one, which is the second position of that array wheels, and we now have two wheels objects in the wheels attribute of the bike object. Remember the wheels attribute is an array that holds two wheels objects, and I made both wheels objects and put it into that array for that bicycle. I could then actually access AO wheels bracket zero. Now that it's an object, dot size put data into those. And we'll have a funky bicycle where we'll say the first wheel is 26 inches and the second wheel is a 30 inch. So we have a pretty cool looking bike. Now what else could I do with this? Well how about if I did an array list of bikes? Array list of bike and we'll call it AL bikes equals new array list constructor. We have to go ahead and import the array list by right by clicking on the little light bulb red add import. Now that I have an array list there, I could say al bikes dot add. What do I want to add? A new bike object. And in this case, instead of using the default constructor for bike. I could do this one where I pass it gears, the name, and number of seats. So I could say, how many gears does this one have? Ten. What type of bike is it? A mountain bike. How many seats? Two. I could say AL bikes dot add new bike. And this has one gear. It's called a unicycle. And it has one seat. I now have two items in my array list. I could even say array list dot get parenthesis zero parenthesis, which says go get the first item in your array list, which is a bike object. Let's go and access the number of wheels for that first bike. So this bike said it had 10 gears, mountain bike, had two seats. This has one gear, unicycle, and one seat. No 
Notice that we came up here when we called those constructors. A bike constructor would come here, gears, names, seats, and the first thing that would do is pass on the name and the seats from that constructor, which would then send it to the parent class vehicle, which would say take the name, store it to the name attribute, take the seats, store it to the seats, store it to the seats attribute, and then continue on in that constructor and take the gears and assign it to the gears attribute. And Java is smart enough to figure out which constructor to use based upon the number and types of the parameters you pass in. So now working with the first object in the array list, I could say let's go access the AL wheels attribute. Well remember we said that is going to be equal to an array of wheels. And we'll go ahead and do that. The first white, now we have an error there, and that's because it says we're trying to work with the whole attribute, but remember, that is an array already. So we need to say, we need to put the object in a specific position of the array. So we could say, put it into zero for that first bike. We could do the same thing, put it into position one of that bike. And for each one of those, I could also say, let's go get that object of the AO wheels, wrap it zero, change the size to be 30 for that one. And I'm going to copy and paste. And we'll say put 30 in the second one. And I could go ahead and do it again with the second bike, that's our unicycle. So I'll say albikes.get1, which is the second object in the array list, AO wheels, bracket zero, equals new wheels. A new object is now in that array, there's only one wheel in it, and we'll say albikes.get1, AO wheels, bracket zero, and we'll say that the size for the unicycle um, will be 20 inches, and I have to change a typo right there. So what this shows you is that you can actually have classes built upon classes because of inheritance using the keyword extends. And when you do the inheritance, we always try to call the parent and make sure they can do their job just in case. And one class can actually have an attribute, which is an array of objects from another class. And then it also showed you that you could go ahead and create a single variable of that object. Creating a variable of type bike means you get everything the bike has plus everything the parent vehicle has. Or an array list of bikes. But remember, if you do an array list, you're responsible for creating a new object for each element of that array list. Based upon the scope, you might or might not be able to access something. For instance, take a look at the bike. One attribute is called gears. It's private, meaning it's only visible in the class. So if I came down here and I said, oh, bike dot gears, there is no attribute I can access. So if I want to give the user the ability to change a private attribute in a class, I need to come back to the class bicycle, and I'll right mouse click, insert code, and choose getter or setter for gears. Now I've made the ability for the user to call the get gears, which says it's going to return an int value, which is the attribute gears, and I can set it by receiving an inter integer. I'll pass it to gears, and I can set the attribute. That means I can come down to the program and say, oh, bike dot set gears 10. Or I could say system dot out, oh, bike dot get gears. And that would print the values of that private attribute. So by making an attribute private, we can limit other software developers on how they use our class. We can control how they access 
and change the value of that private attribute through our getters 